Hey all, Andy here, helping you build a career you love. Thanks for being with me on a Thursday. Got an hour here, straight Q&A. You can ask me anything, anything related to your career. Hey, you can ask me anything for that matter. We'll talk about life, whatever it is that you want to talk about. I'm here for you. Get in the chat, say hi. Let me know who you are, what you do, where you're from, what you need. Put some question marks in front of those questions so we can find them easily. And if you are a boot camper, use your hashtag. If you're in my leadership coaching program, use your hashtag. I'm going to see you all tomorrow. Actually, I'm going to see both of you, both, both of you sets of people tomorrow for some skill building. Uh, I got a straight hour today. I'm going to take one question after another right from the chat. Let's see who's in the house. Uh, Verun, my Canadian brother. Lydia, what's up? T.A. Bragg, Adam Start. Look at that. Like, I don't know how many countries are represented right there in the first handful of people. Great to see everybody. Mohit, what's up? Good afternoon, Andy, but it doesn't tell me who that is. Kurt, what's up? Good to see you, Gary. Again, condolences about dad. So sorry about that. Hope you're hanging in there. Cherry, we got a lot of Canadians today. All right, so let's get right to it, man. It's 11.01, and I think I might have even been a few seconds late to my party today, which I don't like. But you know what? When you got four dogs, it's it's they don't always cooperate. All right, so we got a question here from Varun. Prominent level execs, that is chairman after uh, you have connected with them. How do I max and build this connection? So I don't know that it matters who the connection is with. I would use the same steps. Now, what goes inside the steps might be a little different. But when I, when I develop a connection with somebody... And I go through uh, this in more detail in a networking video that I created a number of years back about um, business networking and how to build business relationships, professional networking and how to build business relationships. To me, networking is an all the time thing. It is something that you, you, I recommend you do on a consistent basis, whether that's a weekly thing, a monthly thing, or what quarterly thing, depending on who the person is. But when I get um, somebody who is going to engage with me, I'm going to figure out a way to add value to their life first. So I'm about, you know, you, you talked about connecting with them. What is it I can do for you? How can I help you? What do you need? What are your challenges? Who would you like to meet? Are there customer markets you're trying to penetrate? Are there individuals you're trying to meet? I'm all about what can I give you? And to me, the, the maxing is in the giving. The gift is in the giving. And believe me when I tell you, you and, and you might be thinking, well, Andy, I need something right now. And that's great. And you can ask for that. But I, I always think the, the best way to max out the relationships that you're, that you're creating or, or those that are inviting you into their life, uh, professional or personal life, it, it's about what can you do for them. And the other stuff will happen naturally and organically. I would strongly recommend checking out the uh, professional networking video that I have on YouTube. If uh, I did, I did sort of quickly slide in that little plug about tomorrow. I'm meeting with members of my leadership coaching group, which I am. Uh, but in inside the leadership library, for any of you that want to know my philosophy and mechanics and tools and whatever on networking. I have a whole hour-long session and plus Q&A and other things that go along with it if you're interested in a workbook and other and a challenge and all those other kind of things that go along with it. So I hope that helps. Job Pirate. My last job was pre-pandemic. HR screener asked, why are you looking for a job? Uh, replied, because everything is getting more expensive. What would be a good answer? Okay, so... Hey, from Europe to, uh, to you, Job Pirate. So why are you looking for a job? There are many good answers. And uh, I, always, I, 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 I always hate answering your questions with an it depends. 
but it does depend because somebody might be looking for a job because they hate their boss. Somebody might be looking for a job because they just got let go. Somebody might be looking for a job because they're changing careers. Somebody might be going along through life hunky-dory and they are just very interested in getting into a particular company, which has now, uh, through their through their efforts, through hopefully either boss hunting, networking, or even if you applied online, you got an interview. And my, I, I'm not looking for a job. It's my dream to work for your companies. There are many good responses. How you package them are going to is going to depend on what the rationale is or reason why you are looking. Uh, for for you. Uh, I would always, the, the reason you are looking for a job, uh, if you are unemployed, the, 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 the reason you are looking for a job is multiple fold, right? You, one of the reasons you're looking for a job is because you were unemployed. If somebody asks me, why am I looking for a job? You could say, well, I'm, I'm currently unemployed and I love to work. The reason I'm talking to you is... Right. And, and you want to shift it to, well, why am I even looking at your company? And that's really the question you want to get to as fast as possible. So there are many, many, many good answers. Job Pirate, one thing, you know, hey, plug for the book. This book is $8.99 ebook on Amazon. Uh, I, I've, I've written this book. I've worked with the publisher. They manufactured it. I now have a whole bunch of these copies that I paid for that are sitting in a warehouse in McHenry, Illinois, and I will ship this $33.95 book, or I think this one's $28.95. Sorry, my other one's $33.95. Uh, to you, anywhere in the world, I will mail it to you if you chip in seven bucks, and I will give you the ebook, and I will give you the audio book, and some other bonus books if you'd like. It's a pretty easy read. It's a hundred and some odd pages, and it's, it's it, well, it sounds like I talk. Uh, but it, it it it's pretty good interview intervention. So so grab that. And in the reason I mention it, Job Pirate, is because in there I give you um, there's a chapter inside interview intervention that uh, is titled "My Silver Bullet Interview," and I go through what I think are the 14 most effective job interview questions that an employer can ask universally. That excludes anything related to your domain expertise. Like if you're the mechanic, how do you put this engine together? I don't, those are not in there. But the ones that are in there, there are 14 of the most prominent and most effective ones. I've also included 43 variations of those 14. Why the employer at, is asking them, what the rationale is behind the question, and your very best responses. So not only your to help you understand why I want you to answer it a certain way, but then I give you sample answers as well. That's all in here, not to mention a whole bunch of other chapters on everything else interview related. So you might want to consider grabbing it. Hope that helps. Tanya Arnold, what is happening? From Oregon. Lydia, I'm building a one-page site for my personal brand. For context, I'm in marketing and digital efficiency. Lydia, I love that you threw that in there because... A lot of you are building you know, sites that you don't need to, but Lydia, you do. Uh, I don't want this to be an online resume, though. Do you have any suggestions for content? Yes. Lydia, love, 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 love this question. Okay, anybody who's like Lydia and is in a, in a beautiful picture, and congratulations on whenever you got married. Uh, anybody who is in a marketing-centric position, I'm not talking about like the CMO or the director of marketing or the VP of marketing, but a marketing centric position as it relates to building marketing assets, things like videos, um, websites, uh, maybe there's audio podcast, whatever it is that you've marketed, branded, or something you've built or written, social copy, uh, pictures, graphics, those kinds of things that are an illustration that is a portfolio of sorts. Now, this is an online portfolio. And I, I think that uh, if, you, if you've created digital, uh, digital products, uh, I, would, I would put them up there. And whatever it is that you've created, uh, I would probably have not only, this is the, this is the, this is the biggest mistake that I see on, on sites like this. So if you are somebody who wants to build 
a design-like web page or web site that's illustrating your work. The one thing that is always important, what is it that I always say whenever you're telling a story in a job interview? What's the first thing that you want to give the interviewer? Context. Context comes in the form of what? Challenges, problems. But in your case, Lydia, what's the case study? Right? So, hey, I'm Lydia. My, the Mile Walk Academy and the CEO, Andy, hired me to help him uh, amplify his social media reach. Here's what I did. I helped him with video selection, video production, video graphics, uh, online social media messaging. Uh, and like, and what you're doing is you're, you're, you're showing a sample. You don't have to show every one of my videos. You show a video with captions, with some things, with emojis popping up, and whatever fancy stuff that you did. And then there's a little storyboard underneath it. When I started with Andy, he only had 100,000 followers. When I got done with Andy, he had 500,000 followers, right? And, and you're showing by using illustrations such as these four things, right? That's what I want to know because you putting a pretty video together for me doesn't mean anything. But if you have context around it, right? So those are the kinds of things. Now, whatever it is that you do, you said, I'm in marketing and digital efficiency. Whatever it is that, that you do that helps create the digital product, asset, medium, or the workflow, or whatever it is that you did that improved, whatever, that's what goes up there. Not just the picture, not just the video. The story goes with it. Great question. That's a really, really great question. Lots of luck there. Mohit, what's up? Is it okay to jump ship every three to four years to grab good opportunities or is company or is company loyalty matter, especially when you are eyeing executive C-level roles in the long run? Okay, so I have... Uh, an it depends answer here. Number one, I <clears throat> I said this to somebody last night on a coaching session, and he was trying to explain to a CEO. Uh, there was there was a a pattern to to his work history, and he had like eleven years, and then he had five years, and then he's had a couple of one year, one to two year runs. And he was interviewing with a, one company and another company, and he had sunk a lot of time interviewing with one one company. And he had this terrible exchange with the CEO. The CEO was rather brash, and. The, the the my client was asking me about what you know what do I think should he pursue something and 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 basically spend more time trying to chase this opportunity and go and put this presentation and I was explaining to him my viewpoint and he said to me but I've already sunk so much effort into this to where I stopped him and said that doesn't make any difference it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is what you are about to invest in the future, your time and how much, I don't care how much time you spent because why? Because that's already gone. Now you have to decide, right? I've used the movie theater analogy, right? You walk into a movie theater, you sit down and in 10 minutes, you don't like the show except you and your date, you paid 30 bucks for the ticket and you're gonna what? Do you wanna get up and leave or do you wanna sit through it because you paid the 30 bucks? The only thing worse than paying the 30 bucks for a bad movie is you wasting the next 90 minutes of your life watching it. Right. So at any moment in time, you are always faced with a choice. And I look at that choice in multiple dimensions. So you asked me, should I jump ship? You're talk, you're asking me something about something that you're not even faced with yet that is not by design you thoughtfully putting together a career trajectory that's going to enable you to reach your goal. If you say I'm here and I want to be the CEO, Think in terms of going forward, how am I going to spend my time in working with the companies, building the skills, and so on and so forth. And if you chart a path of, I would work backwards, 
what skills does a CEO have? What skills does a CEO need? What, what you know, everything from leadership, the domain expertise, uh, marketing, sales, operational experience, customers, all of the skill sets that great CEOs understand. Where are you? What are the gaps? The companies that you work for along the way are, are what? They're mediums to, to deliver you the skills, for you to gain the skills, and you on top proactively taking advantage of the opportunities that they're giving you to learn, you learning outside, and so on. And what you're doing is you're chipping away at hopefully enjoying what you're doing at any moment in time and taking advantage of opportunities to design space in your life to, to work on skills and, and fill in those gaps so that you're accumulating the level of skills and expertise that you feel is helpful, that you enjoy, that will get you to your goal. How you get there, I don't know. And at any moment in time, you need to be looking at, is this providing me the best opportunity to? Am I enjoying myself? Am I learning? Am I loving who I'm working with? Am I on the right trajectory? The trajectory you're on at any moment in time is more important than where you are at any moment in time. Where you are at any moment in time is an absolute snapshot, which is over like that, right? But the trajectory continues on. Some people go this way. Life doesn't go this way, it goes this way, right? Hopefully up, but it, there's a lot of ups and downs. Kind of like the stock market, the housing market, or any other market. So is it okay? Well, I don't, I don't know. If, if you feel that in three or four years, you, you know, that opportunity in, in where you're working has run its course, then, then, then leave. If something better comes, you know, comes your way or you can create a better opportunity. That's the way I look at that. This is a, uh, I, I hope that you take a good close look at how you view career planning because a lot of times what happens is people say, oh, well, to get ahead, you need to leave you know, organizations and that's a, a better way to make more money and that's a be better way to get more opportunities. I don't know whoever told you that or whoever thinks that. I mean, for somebody, it might have happened that way. Uh, but I think there's a balance between if I'm working for a great organization and I love what I'm doing and I love the people and I continue to get more opportunities in a space that I love and that I'm passionate about, why would I leave kind of thing? If I feel that I'm being paid well and I enjoy what I'm doing, you don't ever have to leave kind of thing. So I would look for not whether I need to leave the company. I would look for is what I'm doing helping me grow because if you're if you're at the same company and you're continually getting more and more responsibilities and you're you're growing up up the chain of command as well as sideways meaning I mean that in a good way right uh, you go up by uh, I'm an analyst and a senior analyst and then a manager and a director and a so on and so forth that that's going up 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 the ladder and then and then sideways is well and I'm learning what this industry and this industry or this solution line and this solution line or this software product and that software product and you're expanding your knowledge base so i look to grow in multiple dimensions and that's the way i do it that's a really good question you need you need to be with me tomorrow because this is what we're going to be talking about is what i just described to you is how you plan this out and how you get in all the ingredients related to the inventory of skills, the instruction that you need, the tools that you need, the coaches that you need, the metrics that you need to track, the tracking mechanism itself to track the metrics, and how you go through all that and plan all that out. So uh, so give that some thought. I love it. That's a good question. Really good question. Kurt, aloha to you. I'm tracking, buddy. Let's get cracking is right. And Mohit, you got another question here. Love your sessions. How do you approach people in your network or in your current company to be your advocates during your job search internally or externally? Well, uh, there is a, a big difference between will you serve as a reference for me in the event I'm able to secure an opportunity versus, you know, can you go and, and champion me to so-and-so? Now, again... If I'm working with people internally and externally, I'm focused on building a solid relationship and building it so that they, in fact, would want to help me get to where I want to go. And so, so 
you, you probably hear me say this, the longer term you think, the better short-term decisions you make. So by that, I mean, if, if, if you just met me, it would, it would serve you better to build a relationship with me and then ask me if, for a favor somewhere down the road. But most people, what they do is they reach into somebody and they want to they, they want to do the ask right away. And it, 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 everything in your life works like this. If you're building a product, they want immediate results instead of it's just an iteration. I'm gathering data. That's the short term step. The long term goal is I'm, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going because this is this is what I want. This is my passion and this is what I'm working toward. But a lot of people, when they look at the short term, they make hasty decisions. It, this happens in your job search, same kind of things. So, you know, it, how do I approach them? I approach them by building relationships. How can I help you? What is it that I can do? I, I, I one time when I uh, transitioned out of, uh, out of information technology consulting and I opened up an executive recruitment firm, I had just spent nearly the fr prior two decades doing nothing but giving people stuff helping them with their lives, helping them with their careers, doing favors for them. 18 years in, I opened up my own recruiting firm. I was not bashful about calling every single person that I had ever met and asking them something, asking them for a favor at that point. Now, that's an extreme example, but that's how you need to think. That's how you need to think. Think about it that way. Varun, hello again. Do you have a video on how to start a conversation with you are the best? Well, it depends who you're having the conversation with. So I have videos out there on networking. I have videos out there on introducing yourself in an interview. I have videos out there on building a rapport in an interview. I have I have lo loads of them. Check Check my channel. Cherry, how are you? Adam Stark, how can you give a boss a unique compliment in the boss hunting message? Most just have a LinkedIn page or a short company website bio. Also, is it best to keep the boss hunt message short and sweet? Okay, to answer your last question, I've given you the template. You have the template. Anybody can have the template free, the two templates. Take them. I've already given you what I think is the optimal length and the optimal structure, it's there. I'm not gonna comment on that. Um, giving them a unique compliment, you have to look at what it is that they do. I worked with somebody on Monday, okay, so three days ago. She's in Germany. We went through her resume, her boss hunt templates, meaning the, the, the kinds of compliments she would open with to whom she was connecting based on who they were and what their basically pro forma profiles looked like. And then we looked at um, her networking messages to one, rekindle something with somebody who she spoke with, a couple of other people who she'd interviewed with but didn't get jobs because they fizzled out or whatever. And, and basically we looked at all these. Now in each case, in each one of these, the opener was unique based on who it was, the warmth or the coolness of the relationship. And in your case, you're asking me, I'm assuming, about the most cold boss hunting message, meaning this is somebody I just discovered, I don't know who they are, and they have a limited digital footprint. But I would argue that you could make a pattern of anything. So if they have a website bio, you're not going to need much. You can pick whatever it is that impresses you. Where w w the industry that they've been in. Uh, in one of in one of this woman's um, messages, the person didn't have a huge digital footprint. The person basically had the titles, okay, of the company, meaning this company, this company, this company, this company, and they were all pretty blue chip financial. They were in the financial services industry. They were banks. She was able to say, your, your track record of working at blue chip companies, I admire that because I feel like that's something that you could help me navigate through how to be successful in large organizations like that. Bang. That's all she needed. 
right? That's a connection there. He had nothing, zero, other than company, 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 company. So that's what we packaged, right? If it's, um, you know, I saw you have a, a track record of working at uh, or, or launching startups. Just say that, right? Like, don't, don't rack your brain. The, if, as you continue in the message and you compound that initial compliment, whatever that is. Now, the more information they have on their sites or LinkedIn or the website or in a 10K or a Q or a whatever, then great. But don't sweat it. Package up something and go. 90% of your success is going to be hitting the right person at the right time, right? And 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 you being a good match for something they need. The fact that even if even if the 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 even if, now I want you to make it as unique as possible. I want it to look like it's the only email like that in existence. And I want you to do all those things because I do think that's going to help you. But a big part of your success is being consistent, sending them out, and making sure that you're continuing to do that. Now, I know last week when you asked me and you said you sent 80 of these out and you got 40 responses, that's a tremendously good rate. And the fact that you got 40 no's actually surprises me uh, that you wouldn't even just statistically with that kind of volume get some kind of, hey, this is great, let's talk, right? So, so to answer your question about the unique compliment, it doesn't take much. It's what you were able to find out and what drew you to that person. Just make some connection. Go get them. Who man, what's up? Morning to you. When boss hunting, if I can only find the email for the CEO or a peer, is it more effective going through a peer to look for a manager or go straight to the CEO? Okay, great question. So on this one, there's a couple things. It depends. So let's go structurally. Everybody, all same circumstances. In pecking order of what my the probability of you having success, you go to a boss, a boss who is who you're fairly certain is the boss who needs somebody with your skill sets. That's one. Second thing, teammates. I'm reaching in. I'm doing some due diligence. I'm looking at your organization. I see you work there, so on and so forth. I've given you the whole teammate hunting scripts in the boot camp for you. Recruiters and HR people, third, right? Anybody else in the organization that you can find, right? This precludes anybody that you actually know. These are four cold lanes, meaning you don't know these people. There's obviously, if you know someone, try to get an intro. That supersedes any of that. And then the very last, distant, 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 fifth, sixth, seventh, or whatever it is, is the applicant trashing system, so the ATS. Okay, so now you ask me, uh, well, if I can only find the email for the CEO or peer. What I would say then is, hang tight. Uh, is there a reason you can't find the email for who you think the boss is? If you, can, if you can't, I would take a guess. I would use the blind copy like we've taught you uh, how to do, right? If, and then I would take a shot. If, if that doesn't work, I would go through LinkedIn and send an in-mail because hopefully that person is going to get that in-mail routed either via an alert or an email, right? I get emails when somebody in-mails my LinkedIn inbox. I have that alert set, so send me the message kind of thing, right? So so I would go that way. If you're on if you try to email and, and there's no luck and you in-mail and you still got no joy, right? Then go to the, you can either try the peer first. If you, you know, use the teammate hunting technique. If you have the email, go that route. If you don't have the email, then go the LinkedIn route. If you don't have any, if you're not having any luck there, you can go to the CEO. Again, now I'm saying all this and some of you might be thinking, well, Andy, geez, that's, that's like five iterations or whatever. Except that if you are running my job search challenge. And if you're not sure what that is, the job search challenge is a way for you to stay in motion and continue prospecting each day by identifying three companies 
uh, that you're going to target on that day, identifying three individuals that could somehow get you to those companies or are in those companies, whether it's a, uh, a boss, an HR person, a teammate, a friend who could refer you in or whatever, and then sending three thoughtful messages. If you did that for an entire week, you'd have 15 reach outs. So I don't have any problem with if somebody's not getting back to me, hitting them a week later now, if I send it to them on a Monday and I decide I'm going to send it to them at some point the following week, I've at least sent 15 messages out. And I'm probably not going to care if that person gets back to me. But to answer your question, who man, as far as the pecking order of priorities, that's what I think. I do think that's a great question. And I, it is going to depend on who it is. Now, if it's a CEO of a small company, like there's 25 people, then go to the go to the CEO. If it's a CEO of a 2,500 person company, that might be a little different. And if it's a CEO of a 225,000 person company, then no, kind of thing. So that's the way I would do that, and I would use the different the different mediums as well. So that's a great question. Uh, C Dubs cards, what's up, Mishka? How are you, Jamie F? Jenny Christensen, how are you? Fan of Andy, you know that's my favorite handle. I'm a little partial to that one. Hey, wait, we're 1131. All right, so wait, uh, quick, quick, quick couple of things very quickly. Uh, if you are loving the live shows, hit the little like button on YouTube. It helps, it does. Share it, share it. And if you enjoy getting the live shows every Thursday and the new videos every Tuesday and all the other workshops and everything else I give, make sure you subscribe to the station. Tomorrow, I have another, uh, I, had a, I had a leadership coaching session last Friday, which was totally killer. Uh, I went through presentation mechanics. We had a couple of of the leaders actually run through their pre run through presentations and I was able to give them direct feedback right there like a working session and everybody else got to hear it and I got so many messages from people who attended that or caught the replay about how much they loved it and how valuable it was to actually give them and I'm talking about content structure why to do certain things a certain way why to sequence them a certain way we were really getting into the mechanics that was a ton of fun and that was our regular monthly session for, for April. Tomorrow, there is a bonus session where I am uh, test driving a new um, uh, sequence to build out your career plan, especially as it relates to your goals and the skills that it's going to take in order to attain those goals. So how do I make sure that I am continually developing my professional skills. What should those skills be? What kind of instruction should I get? Where should I get it? Uh, what kind of tools do I need? What kind of coaches do I need? Uh, and how do I, when do I do this? How do I, how do I make sure I'm, I'm building my skills right when I need them? But how can I also make sure I'm working on skills I'm going to need long term that I'm going to take, that's going to take me quite a lot of learning and practice and refining? How do I measure my progress? How do I how do I keep track of it? We're going through all of that tomorrow. I'm also going to give, uh, and because um, I, I I already have an approach for this, and I've outlined it for anybody to see in my leadership uh, skill building roadmap. Which actually, Kara, maybe can we pin um, can we pin that in the in the actually can we can we pin the the leadership page in the chat and then also. Uh, also drop in the in the chat the free booklet that they that they can get. So I have this booklet. It's like 35 pages where I outline all my methodology of building skills and how I take you through the five skill levels that I've I've basically designed as part of my methodology and, and the 46 different skill sets that go across the five layers and what to build first, what to build second. And it doesn't matter where you are in your career, but inside this booklet, there's also a leadership assessment and there's also the steps that you can take. What I'm doing tomorrow is I'm actually giving this group an updated version of these steps, this iterative sequence that I want you to go through. And the reason that I, I want to do that is because uh, you might know that I'm, I'm, I'm just about wrapped up with the manuscript of my fourth book. This fourth book is a leadership book. It is your career syllabus uh, for your entire professional life. 
and it is a, a the book version in a kind of a much more eloquent fashion with a lot of stories and a lot of lessons of how to do this. And I want to test drive my sequence so that does this make sense? Will this work? So I'm going to be taking you through a very thoughtful sequence. If you're in the program, and even if you can't make it, you'll still get the replay. But it's really, it's really going to be a lot of fun. I'm, 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 I'm really looking forward to this one tomorrow, and I can't wait to talk to the leaders about what they think about this, this new, this new approach. So if that's something of interest, jump in. And if you are in my job search coaching program, you're also invited to attend tomorrow. Tyler, what's up? Matiet, how are you from Missouri? Lisa Williams, Eileen, hey, hey. Crystal, what's happening? You're the best? No, you're the best. I was offered the position. Two interviews after listening to your tips. Thank you so much. Can we give Crystal a huge live office hours hug and high 10 and congratulations on her new job? Maria, I've been trying to attend. Oh, great to have you. And C-Dub, this is my first live. Can we give C-Dub a big live office hours welcome? All right, Matia, let's see, what do you got here? After a job offer, after a job offer is extended to the candidate, what are the steps taken or questions to ask uh, with the previous employer? Okay, so I'm going to give you the ideal Andy approach. I like to think that if you went out and interviewed, you job searched, you interviewed, you got a job offer, and you want to take it. I'm assuming that you mean that you want to take it, right? If if that's the case, I like to believe that you initiated that entire process for a good reason. Now, in this book, I talk about the line of thinking and everything, all the steps and prerequisites I want you to go through before you actually bring yourself to market because I want you to be sure that you want to leave. If you're sure you want to leave and you go out and you go through all these steps, what, what remains after you get the offer is to negotiate that. I have a load of salary negotiation videos. I have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel. You're welcome to check that out. And then when you go back to the employer, after you sign everything with the new job offer, you go back to the employer and you resign. And I have videos on how to do that. I'm I am not going to give you any advice because I it it goes against every fiber in my being. I kid you not. I am not exaggerating for effect. For somebody to go back to an employer and hold their feet to the fire, get a counter offer and god forbid accept it. And it's bad enough that the company your previous employer thought to give you a counter offer and it's even worse that you accepted it. I go into all the steps that I would do and how I would think this all the way through in a video I have out there on the eight steps to quit your job the right way. And I go through the exact steps for you. Everything from accepting the job offer, what you do with the company you're going to, what you say or don't say to your previous employer, what you turn in, what you don't, all that good stuff. How much notice to give, generally speaking, the script, the all, you know, the templates, the scripts, the whole I, it's all free. Just check that out on my video. But I I I I, I just counter offers are they're just awful. They're just awful. 72% of people who accept a counter offer are no longer with their companies within 12 months after they accept it. And 80% of the 72% are not with their company within six months for a variety of reasons that I won't even get into, but uh, I'm sure you can gather what those are. Steve, what's up? I'm at Parents in Eastern Kansas and sipping coffee, 2.30 a.m. tornado. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully you are okay. Isa, how are you? Oh, wait. C-dubs, got a question? How should I talk about particular skills that I have some experience with but may not be an expert in during an interview? Okay, couple things. Uh, first, if you're in an interview, generally speaking, but let's just say 99.9% of the time, you're qualified. Otherwise, what? What? You wouldn't be have been invited to the interview in the first place. You've got a resume there. 
They can see your resume. They might have some other insight into what you do. Uh, maybe you talk to the recruiter and you've got the screen under your belt, uh, whatever it might be. But if you're in the interview, I like to think that what I have on paper, meaning my background, is strong enough. Then it becomes a matter of wh whether I can show my value and prove that I'm the best candidate. If I get into a situation where they're exploring in areas where I have some skills, but it's not super deep, I talk about what I am, not what I'm not. Meaning, here's what I have done. Here's the extent to which I have done it. I've additionally learned these other functions, languages, products, or whatever. And so I've, I've built a, an approach, right, that anytime I'm in, I face building this skill or improving this skill, here's what I do. So you're always talking about it in the affirmative. You, you're never talking about your holes, your gaps, your whatever. If, if, if you don't have any experience in it, Number one, I still want you to be confident that it's probably not a primary skill that they need. Otherwise, they wouldn't have given you the, the interview. So if somebody explores into an area that I don't have any experience, then I, then I just say, I've yet to do that, but I have done this, something analogous, show them what you do have. And then the third part of that answer is, and whenever I'm faced with something I haven't encountered before, which we all do, right? We have to be first timers for something. Here's what I do to get up to speed. Bump, 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 bump. And what they're hearing, you know, 90%, not two thirds, but 90% of what you said is all very positive about what you do know and what you can do. Uh, I've yet to do that takes, what, four seconds to say. And so then you move on. Page 58, question number 10 in interview intervention. There's more in there on what I just said. All right. Trish Berry, how you doing? Hey, Andy, with all of the stress that this job transition time brings, can you, take, can you talk a bit about how you stress manage? Would love to hear what meditation leaders you follow. Okay. So now there's two elements to... I think, Trish, what you're asking me, and I love this question. You have no, I like, I'm squealing with glee right now. Uh, there's the, okay, uh, let, let me just try to break it down. There is your mindset and how you look at something. And then there's the, the, the stress relieving activities that are not associated with the way in which you look at whatever it is you're going through. So let me be really clear, right? Meditation, exercise, sleeping right, eating right, those are all things that lead to a healthy body, a healthy mind, and generally decrease stress, right? If you're well-rested or if you're able to control your mind and where 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 the attention goes, you're going to you're going to be a lot less stressed. If you're dwelling on the things that uh, that you're going through right now, you're going to be more stressed. Okay, so let's talk about the first part. When it comes to the job uh, search itself, this goes for anything in your life. Okay, so for me, it's like building a program, writing a book, anything that goes along with selling or marketing or whatever, right? For you, it's selling you into a, an organization, the job itself for you is an outcome that you do not control. The sale for me is an outcome I do not control. So the first thing that I do, and this is the greatest source of stress for all of us, excluding major trauma, death, or anything of that nature, right? I'm not talking about you know, I lost a parent, I lost a spouse, I lost a friend. I, I'm not talking about stresses like this that are external that are very acute, that cause us to be bummed out, okay? I'm talking about our everyday walking around, where we live, what we do, the friends we surround ourselves with. Expectations are the greatest source of strain. Expectations are usually something we expect from something we do not control. Who's tracking with me, right? You get it. That job, I was perfect for, but I didn't get it. You don't, you don't control that. Somebody else does. The raise that I should have gotten, or I should be making this amount of money, or she should have invited me to the party, or whatever. You don't control those things. You have an expectation. You get stressed out. That's the greatest source of all strain for people overall. All right? 
Second thing is when you approach anything, I only look at what can I control. So for you, what can you control? Let's be real simple here. The job search challenge. You can identify the companies. You can identify the people. You can send your messages. You can control evaluating them, like what's happening. Uh, You can control improving the language if you feel it's better or improving your resume or any of that stuff. 100% in your control. Those are the only things I focus on. And And then I monitor data, right? When I make a sale or we do a workshop or we do a promotion or whatever, I am obsessed with the process, not the outcome. The outcome is a lagging indicator of doing all the things right. So from a from a, an approach, a mindset, and, an, and an, uh, a monitoring and an expectations standpoint, I only expect that I will put the effort in, I will do this, and so on. I'm only watching and only racking up victories. That's it. Every single day when you roll out of bed, if you send those three messages, I guarantee you your job's gonna happen. Those are all victories. That's it. You didn't have any defeats that day kind of thing. And so that's from a mechanics and an expectations perspective. Now, from a what do I do from a lifestyle standpoint in order to make sure that that I'm a- equipped to be able to maintain my focus, maintain the proper mindset, not get hung up on outcomes I can't control and so on has a lot to do with your ability to control where your attention goes. So, uh uh, one of one of the favorite my favorite analogies is um, since you asked Don Depani is I, I I like I like his approach to meditation and he talks about your ability to focus on anything right so so if you are focused on the outcome of your job search we need to we need to get your attention off of that the only way to get your attention off of that is to be able to control where your attention goes um if you think about your head and like it's just a, an empty space where wherever you know there's a like a little shining light of energy or whatever you want to call it is going to go to a compartment that focuses on figuratively right on the job search and that. You need to have the willpower to be able to pull it away from that and focus on something else, something you're grateful for, something that you did do well, something, right? And and so you're constantly in a state, if you are stressed out, of trying to refocus where where your thoughts are at any moment in time. The only way to be able to do that is to have strong uh, focusing skills and, and willpower. So I spend all day, every day, in everything that I do, working on my ability to focus and my ability to control my willpower. And willpower is not just abstaining from something, it's to exert control to complete something. Well, I need to complete something. Just being focused and disciplined is willpower. So uh, a big part of what I do each day is when I get up, I practice focusing in the morning. I like literally practice focusing and concentration. I do meditate. This whole process that I go through in the morning takes about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And I don't know if you're in the leadership program because I go through all this. Uh, I actually have a focus lesson. I have a willpower lesson. I have all of these. I have a productivity lesson and an entire challenge where where a, a, as I do my practice in the morning, what, what are those? Those are ideal conditions for me to practice without interruption, without the phone ringing, without the email open, without anybody interrupting me. So now I'm practicing focus, control, willpower, and everything in a, in a uh, no pun intended, controlled environment where nothing, can go, nothing will go wrong. And then this is my practice so that when I go into the game, like my work day, that I'm, I'm already warmed up, right? Like a golfer who's gonna go and right, warm up before the round or a football player who's going to run run some routes before the big game or whatever it is. It's the same kind of thing. Then as you go through your day, what I do is th- it, when I transition between activities, I actually will mentally park what I do, complete it, notate it, make sure I like, okay, I'm done with that. Did I achieve my goal? So on and so forth. And then I'll look forward to what I'm about to do. Now, you might be asking, well, why am, I, why am I talking about this when you're talking about being able to control stress? You accumulate stress as you go through the, any day, no matter what you're doing, even if you love what you're doing. But what happens is if, if as you transition from one activity to the next, maybe I'm stopping writing and I'm going to get on the phone. 
I, I park what I'm doing so I can complete it and mentally move it to the side and I don't carry it with me into the next thing. And then I'm thinking with intention proactively about, well, okay, my next thing is, here's what I need to make sure I get out of my coaching session with Trish. I think about you, I think about whatever, and then I think about what an ideal session looks like. And then when I'm done with that, and I pack it up, and I did all my notes and whatever, I park that, I think forward, and I go on. As you do this throughout the day, you are, you are retraining your brain to get back to be able to focus on what you need to focus on, not focus on things you don't want to be focusing on. This constant state of, of, of doing this in all aspects of your, of your life. So like, I'm going to take a break as soon as this is over. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to let these two dogs out. I'm going to fold some clothes. I'm going to think about what my next hour is at, at 1210 or 1220 or whenever, you know, whenever that is. And, and, and I'm, I'm ready to go. And, and what I'm doing is I'm constantly, uh, you know, packing it up, quick reflection, thinking forward. Anyway, a, be doing this in a continual basis helps you keep this thing in order. So my ability to talk with you right now, answer you, and then go on to the next one doesn't have to do with me practicing speaking through a camera. It, ha it has everything to do with me make making sure that my ability to focus, not lose my train of thoughts, hold a whole outline in my head as soon as I read the question and know I need to answer these three things for her has to do with my ability to concentrate that I've practiced every day for years, right? But what do we do? We practice distract distraction all day, every day, right? The phones, this is beeping, that thing's ringing, the alerts are going on because we don't control those things. Well, a lot of your ability to maintain your stress has to do with your ability to block out everything else that's not really that important, but that's making you stressed. So you have the things that are stressful, like the job search. You have the things that shouldn't be stressing you out that are. You have you don't have practices to be able to pull your attention away from the things that are stressing you out and get them focused on things that are either making you happier or will get you out of the rut you're in or will get you moving in the direction you want. So so that's that's what I do. I I love Don Depani. Uh, I love Wayne Dyer. And those are, that's it. Those are the only, I've looked at a million, well, not a million, but you know what I mean. I've looked at a lot of meditation gurus. And those are the only two I like. So that's that's what I go with. Uh, Don Depani has a book called uh, Focus, Unwavering Focus, maybe. I think that might be the title of the book. Check that out. That'll help. That's a great question, man. I love that stuff. Wendy K15, sorry to hear about that. Recently lost your job. You can always come here for some joy. Carol, how are you? Life biz, what's up? Priyanka, going to complete the first year of the job at the end of this month. All this has been possible just because your tips. Love it. Question, how should I negotiate the appraisal? Priyanka, a couple couple of things. There, Number one, I don't want to forget. I do have some pay raise and salary increase videos on my channel. So in addition to what I'm about to tell you, I would definitely check those out. The single biggest tip I would give you and anybody who's going to negotiate a raise is to remember, to remember, repeat after me, the raise I'm negotiating for is for the work I'm about to do, okay? Can I get a repeat on that? What's the big mistake that people make when they go to negotiate their raise? You think it's about work you already did. You are already paid for that. And if there's any dollars outstanding for that, it's called a bonus that is paid for you in arrears. The, the amount you're earning going forward has to do with what? The work you're going to do tomorrow and the next month and the next month, right? Okay, so if, if that's the case, you should be negotiating and making your argument based on what? the value you're going to create, which is based on what? The results you're going to give them in the future. So you need to make an argument about what that job is worth. Now, there's a couple of things here I want, I want you to be mindful of. Some of you are going to be negotiating raises for promotions, meaning I'm Priyanka, I finished my first year, and now they're going to give me more responsibilities. 
you're negotiating your raise based on the more responsibilities, okay? And I, I give you some tips on how to do this if you check those videos out, but I want to draw your attention to that. Some of you might say, well, or Priyanka might say, Andy, I'm, I'm at this job. I've been at the job for a year. It's 12 months, and they told me that they were going to give me a raise after 12 months, but I'm not changing jobs. That's cool too, right? What are you going to do? Still the same things you were doing before? Right. Except what? They're paying you for the future, right? Where am I going with this? Well, in the future, should you not be able to do that job faster or higher quality or less errors or whatever you want to call it, right? There should be a major improvement from year two to year one. Can you argue that you are worth more because you're able to do it faster, but then what? If you're able to do it faster, that leaves a void. What are you filling with the void? Now, you could be filling more with the void, right? Instead of me doing and making five widgets in a week, I can now make seven. Awesome. Well, seven's worth more than five, is it not? Okay. If I'm only still only going to make five because there's other dependencies and other things. Okay, well, what are you doing with the extra time that you have, right, that you don't need in those 40 hours, right? So you're making, you're making a, an argument. What's another element you can lean on? If I was to leave, how much would you need to pay to replace me? Right, that's a juxtaposition to to put some and throw some cold water on the employer's face to say, "Wow, if I had to replace you, it would probably cost me more money to get somebody to come in because they're not going to accept what you're. They're probably already earning what you earn. If they're somewhere else, and I got to pull them out, maybe I got to pay a recruitment fee. At a minimum, I have to wait, spend time of mine and the recruiters and the HR person or whoever and the other people on staff." Right, so there's a number of things that I want to draw your attention to. If you are in my premium leadership coaching program, I have all the map to all of this entire discussion and all the steps and all the checklists and everything that's in the leadership library. If you are not in my leadership coaching program, well, first question is why the hell not? But I understand not everybody wants to be in it, <gasps> but there's, there's videos on my YouTube channel that will help you with that. All right, so I hope that helps. Kara, how you doing? You still, is Kara here with me? Kara, please slack me and say hey. All right, what do we got next? Mr. Artist, how you doing? Marie Barker, what's up? Oh, there is Kara in the chat. Let me see him, just make sure. It got really dark. It's really dark in my house. Can you see that, how dark that is? I went with, went with blue today. Blue today. Maybe I'll go with red next week. I had purple last week. Life should be colorful, no? You love the book, Maria. Beautiful. Deborah, is lack of interview opportunities due to the current economic climate or my own skills? I had five high profile job interviews in December and in January to present just one. Okay, so a couple things. I, uh, I, well, number one, I don't love that you're you're having issues with getting interviews, but I do love the question. And, okay, first thing that I say to anybody I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with, if they said to me, Andy, it's Deborah, great, really looking forward to this, I'm not getting, I'm not getting job opportunities. The first place I look is, are you being consistent in the way in which you're reaching out to employers? So I've mentioned the job search challenge a couple times, and I very briefly went through that it's a level of consistency where day in and day out, you are reaching out and basically creating three new opportunities for yourself. If you want more on the job search challenge, I have a 30-minute uh, a version on my YouTube channel, which is free, or I have a seven-module premium program with everything in it, with all the, all the instructions, all the tools, all the templates, all the challenges, everything and how to overcome them, scripts and you name it. Uh, and that is sold separately for 500 bucks or uh, you can get it as a free gift if you join my job search coaching program. Now, back to Deborah's question. First thing is, are you being consistent? Usually, usually, a lack of job interviews is a function of lack of consistency. That's the single greatest reason. Second thing I would say is, are you actually targeting 
the right kind of people. Now, what you didn't mention, and I don't know, I don't know this to be the case. Those those opportunities that you had in December and in January, I don't know how they came to you. Meaning, uh, did some recruiter reach out or an exec reach out, or did you s- submit your resume into the applicant tracking system and you got a you got an interview? December and January are premium prime time hiring months. That doesn't mean that people don't hire in April and lots of people are getting lots of interviews right now. So number one, it's a function of consistency. Number two, if, it, if you are waiting for somebody to call you, that's not, that does not count. You're not doing anything. I don't know that that's the case, but I'm just saying, just in case that's the case. Next thing is if you're reaching out to bosses, uh, are, do you have the requisite skills that they need? Do you have a good resume that shows that? Are, are your messages thoughtful? So then there's there's not only are you being consistent, then it becomes a function of are you targeting the right individuals? If you're going to tell me, well, I'm submitting my resume into the applicant tracking system, I'm going to tell you that counts as zero in terms of whether I think anything about your applications, meaning you could be the most qualified, perfect candidate uh, for a job and you still have a minuscule chance of being seen, let alone getting an interview. So yes, I understand that some of you will get your jobs that way, but to me, that doesn't even count and I would totally dismiss it. The next thing I would go on to is, all right, are you actually shooting for the right kind of roles? So not only are you targeting the right kind of boss, but are you actually targeting companies and positions that that you are equipped to handle? So I have situations where a career changer will say to me, well, I'm trying a boss hunt and it's not working. Well, of course it's not working because you don't have the skills that a boss needs. So I start to look through these different, um, I kind of peel the onion to see where the issue ultimately ultimately lies. To give you the super short answer, uh, companies are still hiring like crazy. They are. And I know this because I see it every day and I'm coaching people who have gobs of interviews. The guy last night, he's five interviews right now. All for, he's an ESG. By the way, ESG, the most popular job being recruited for and hired for in our nation right now. So why? Because we're all on this kick, right? For for ESG related stuff. And the environment is important and social justice is important and diversity is important. So companies are trying to make a strong push to do that. But so too are they hiring engineers and salespeople and marketing people and project managers and and all that good stuff too. So the 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 market itself is still very healthy. There are still a huge gap of 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 positions, people to fill the positions that are open. So I think the the issue lies somewhere in the mechanics of what you're doing. And then it becomes a matter of, of, of troubleshooting. For anybody who is in the job search coaching program, check the job search challenge. The uh, the fifth video, the fifth session is the troubleshooting session. Uh, Deborah, I would definitely recommend if you haven't seen it, check out the job search challenge playlist, the free one on my YouTube channel. There's a, a base mechanics one, and then there's an advanced tactics one. They're each about a half an hour. I hope that helps. Uh, and that's a, that's a great question because it can be, it can be very, very confusing. All right, Kara, how are we doing? How are we doing on? I got a few more minutes here. Let me see. Isa, uh, I think I'm in LinkedIn jail. That can be. Uh, I'm not able to send messages via LinkedIn. Can only request a connection, then add comments. I am getting a few connections, but no responses. Okay, first off, I would st- I would not be connecting with anybody I do not know. So I'm not even going to comment on that. But the one thing I will tell you, if you are in LinkedIn jail, and if, if for any of you that do not know what LinkedIn jail is, if you are using LinkedIn to search for people, meaning you're using like the search bar or the advanced search tactics in LinkedIn, and you're doing that hour after hour after hour, LinkedIn is tracking what you're doing And in their mind, you're a power user. Maybe you're a salesperson or maybe you're a recruiter or something of that ilk. And so what they do is they put you in a little timeout and they say, you can't do this. You need to either pay for a different pro, you know, premium membership level, or you need to buy our sales package or our recruiter package or recruitment package or whatever. Now, for you, I would say you uh, have access 
to the session in the job search coaching program on uh, we show you how to write Google Boolean, or I think some people like to call it LinkedIn X-Ray, but it's really Google Boolean to basically break the LinkedIn database and use Google to find the link people in LinkedIn. And, and then LinkedIn doesn't know you're doing that because you're doing it through Google. And we teach you the syntax. And I thought you were using it and going back and forth with us and me and Kara in there. So my idea for you is don't use the LinkedIn search capabilities and use the Google search capabilities. And do not connect to somebody outright. Number one, uh, I don't like the etiquette. Number two, you only had 300 characters or whatever it is. And you're not going to be able to, to, uh, to build a relationship with them that way. And people are happy to connect with you, but they don't want to be bothered by a lot of messages. So I would try to direct email them or use LinkedIn, or sorry, use Google Boolean to figure out people for you to contact via email. So I would try, I would try that. All right. LaFoss, what is that? As young woman with outstanding track record, how can I demonstrate seniority during a job interview with a C-suite level and executive recruiters? Okay, um, I don't know uh, what you mean by young woman, meaning, and I'm not being funny here, like are you 22 or 25 and you've only been working for a couple of years and you're asking me how to interact with executive recruiters and C-suites and I would say I wouldn't. If you are, say, 30, it becomes a function of what it is you know. And so I wouldn't necessarily say, how would I demonstrate seniority? If Do you actually have the seniority to demonstrate? Your demonstration of whatever it is that any of you are demonstrating is a function of your storytelling. And when you are telling stories in, a, in the proper construct, at the appropriate level, with the right level of context, the right way to show how you approach something, the steps you took in your approach, and then ultimately what happened, that, that formula is going to be able to help you communicate with anybody at any level and show your level of seniority or really your wisdom or experience, your communication skills and all those other things. For you, what I would check out are my storytelling videos on, on YouTube. And anybody who is in my premium job search coaching program, I would strongly recommend you look at the interview intervention 10th anniversary edition training program, specifically the storytelling session, the, the, the module with storytelling. There's a main session. There is a, a hot seat session, so a case study session where I actually took people's stories and structured them for them, and then there's a Q&A area. I would look at all of that if you're in the in the premium program. Uh, Lopfest, I don't know your handle, so I don't know if you're in the program or not, but if you are, check that out, and I would strongly recommend looking at my my storytelling videos on on LinkedIn. As a matter of fact, or sorry, on YouTube. As a matter of fact, on Tuesday, Tuesday, if you are subscribed to my channel and you are on my email list, I'm going to be sending you a digest about how to communicate with an executive. That's the video. It's about a six or six minute, seven minute video on how to change your tactics when you are speaking to an executive. I'd be, I'd keep an eye out for that one. That's probably what you need exactly. All right. Let's see what else. Um, let me see, just buzzing on down. All right, folks, I'm a little over the time. I needed to stop at noon, but I was having so much fun. Uh, all right, for those of you who are interested in my leadership coaching program, or those of you that are in the leadership coaching program, or my special guest boot campers, we're on tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Uh, I, I am back next Thursday here, same, same, what, what, what is it, bat time, bat channel. Uh, 11 o'clock next Thursday, I'll be here uh, with, with, with you all. Uh, on Tuesday, I'm releasing that video and a podcast on how to communicate with an executive in a job interview. So it, it, I think it'll really help. But if you're interested in the leadership program, uh, jump in before tomorrow. That session is going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun if you're interested in understanding how to map out and build your career development plan. And I'm gonna show you how to do that over the next, and how to build it so that you have a plan over the next 12 months. We're actually gonna do all this in the session. 
So, uh, so I hope you can make that as well. All right. All, I totally appreciate all the time and attention that you give me. I really do. Thank you so much for spending this hour or so with me. I will see some of you tomorrow. I will see a lot of you next Thursday. In the meantime, if I don't see you, have a great weekend. Take care. Lots of luck.